Hi there guys, uh, today we're going to be talking about auxiliary views and as you can see in front of you, you have an auxiliary view uh, with a hexagonal shape and I've already provided the center lines for you. The center lines will obviously give you the center of the shape and that's going to come into play when we are um, finding our actual view on the um, isometric box. Now in your case you will then use your 30 degree set square and go and draw up your box and in this case here yeah, I've already given you the box. So let's get started. Um, you might notice that the bottom right hand corner I've labeled as A and that is the lowest point of your, your isometric drawing. Let's see what the actual instruction says. The instruction says use the auxiliary view given to draw an isometric prism. Right, so we know that first things first, that is a prism using the corner A as your lowest, your lowest point. The construction box in which the prism will fit has already been provided. Please remember to include all necessary center lines. Great. All right. So in this case over here, I know that A is on my bottom right hand corner. And I have A as the lowest point in my isometric drawing. We know this is an isometric drawing because we are using 30 degree uh, lines and vertical lines. And we go ahead and we construct the box first. The way in which I found the box is the distance from A to D will be the distance from A to D over here on the isometric box. And also from A to B will be the distance from A to B on this isometric box. Okay, so let's look at the points between A and D because we're just simply going to go plot these points on the isometric square that we're going to be working with. Just to highlight the isometric square that we are going to be working with. There we go. Alright, and the points that I'm dealing with over here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. I'd like to go and label these points so that I could keep track on which point is which. Alright, so I'll just label this number 2. Label this one here number three, and label this over here number four, label that number five, and then the last one is obviously number six. Okay, so now I can keep track of the points that I am finding. All right, so let's look. The point between A and D, let's have a look at the point between A and D on the isometric box. A and D is this line over here. The point between A and D is obviously number 1. Alright, so number 1 in this case here happens to be on the midpoint, okay, the center of this line between A and D, or from A to D. So I can simply go and take this point and plot it on the line here between A and D, which is going to be the midpoint here. Right, so let's quickly go and have a look. My midpoint over here is going to be exactly the same on the opposite side. So let's have a look over here. Between B and C, I have point 4. So between B and C, in the middle, I have point 4. Now you'll literally take your ruler or your compass, open up your compass from B to the point 4, or from A to the point 1. Remember, we're finding the the point on that line over there or on this line over here. Okay, so open up your compass from A to 1, put it on A and go and plot it on this line over here. Just simply scrub a little arc going through this point over here. In this case over here, this line over here provides me with a center point. So I'm going to be drawing a line, a center line as such, at an angle of 30 degrees. from this point over here right through so that I can find the center on this side over here. Alright, 
so let's have a look I'm going to go ahead and just extend this center line slightly here we go okay and now I have point 0.1 and point 0.4 Here it is there. Okay. So now I want to go find the two points between D and C. So yet again, I just simply go and measure from D to point 2. Or open up my compass from D and open it up to 2. Alright, so to, to be able to find 2, I'll go and scribe an arc on this line over here from D. So I'm going to just do a smart dimension in my case. Right, and I'm going to just take this distance over here and I'm going to draw a line and smart dimension that. Right, so that will be my my one point that I'm going to be dealing with over there. Uh, the next will be measuring from C to 3. So C back down towards D. Remember, we're going from C towards D to find 3. Obviously, working with a hexagon, we know that this is going to be the exact same distance as the one I have over here. So I'm going to use the same distance from C to find my next point. Remember, you'll just simply measure and plot these two points over here. Alright, now just to take a bit of a shortcut, I can go ahead and go and construct vertical lines straight down from this point over here, over there. And again, from that point down vertically over there, to provide me with that point over there and that intersecting point over there. That will obviously give me number 5 and 6 which are the two points between A and B, which is between A and B, over there and over there. That saves me a little bit of time. All right. So just to go ahead and do this on the program. I'm just going to make two little lines there to refer to all right so let's have a look to start off with I would obviously go and plot these two center lines so I'm going to do that in this case over here And using a final line, because I have all these points, I can simply go and draw my lines joining each one of the, these points. Okay, there we go. All right, what do we know about this drawing? This drawing says that it is a prism. 
So we know we're going to be taking each one of these lines straight back onto the platform right behind it. Let's try that out. At 30 degrees, we want to take a point from there, back onto that line there. From here to there, from here straight back to the platform behind. And remember, if I'm going from here all the way back to the platform behind me, I will not be able to see that line. So that'll eventually be a hidden detail line. But for this purpose of the video, I'm not going to be including any hidden detail. I'm simply going to be joining the necessary points right. Remember, that this line here goes straight back onto the line at the back over there. If I had to project this hexagon or hexagonal shape straight back onto the, the, the face at the back, I'll be able to use these lines as projection lines to find the points on the, the back surface. But right now I'm drawing a prism, so I'm actually going to use them as final lines. And so I go and join each one of these points to finish off my drawing. Please remember that if the front surface has its center lines, include these center lines in the back. So you'll also be doing center lines for the hexagon at the back if I had to turn this whole object around. Okay. I want to convert those to center lines. Right, looks like I'm going to have to create a center line. So I'm going to convert those to center lines and remember if you are joining the front surface to the back surface with these lines over here going up at 30 degrees you would have to join a 30 degree line or a center line from that center to the front center let's do that right now right, there we go let's get an accurate point Please make sure that it passes right through. There we go. Slightly extend. Your center line. And there we have it. Right guys, thank you for joining me and uh, using auxiliary views uh, and to find the actual points on the isometric drawing. Have a good day.